ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತಂ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ I welcome all the devotees, disciples, samajis, satsangis, Sri Mahans, Mahans, Tanidars, Kotaris, visitors, viewers sitting with us all over the world this time through Nityananda TV, Sadhana TV and through two-way video conferencing having Naina Diksha all over the world. The city is sitting with us through two-way video conferencing having Naina Diksha, our San Jose Madurai, Hyderabad, Nityananda Nagaram, Singapore, Singapuram, Columbus, Sri Lanka, Vancouver, Canada, Los Angeles, Hollywood, Guadalupe, Rameshwaram, Dakota, Dunes, Oman, Sivagangai, London, Kashi, Atlanta, Georgia, Dubai, Chidambarananda, Jorpati, Nepal, Shivananda, Enriching Temple, Bidithi, Morris Plains, New Jersey, Toronto, Tirukkailayam, Scottsdale, Arizona, Houston, Kalahasti, Ohio, Prayag, Los Angeles, Arunachalam, Singapore, Singapore, Seattle, Chidambaram, Hyderabad, Gupta Kashi, and some more cities. I welcome all of you with my love and respects. Today, Nityananda Brahmotsava, third day let's receive mahadeva's grace first and then enter into the satsang around 2 30 pm the sagasra sanka abhishega 1008 kanch with 1008 kanch there will be sanka abhishega and evening 4 pm rudra homa let's enter into today's satsang whenever you feel the fear feeling threatened by something in that agitation you try to change the situation you try to change it by your efforts that is yoga and you try to surrender to the highest intelligence and requesting that intelligence to intervene and protect you that is bhakti knowing you can never be violated being in the original space of Advaita, 
automatically making all the so called fears and threats melt down is living advaita upanishads stand for living advaita understand i am not saying yoga is wrong or little less i am not saying bhakti is wrong or little less all i am saying is upanishads the living advaita is something totally different so many interpretations so many interpretations that's the right word i'll use does not take away the sacredness and originality of the upanishads so many interpretations does not take away the originality of the upanishads please listen sometimes people ask me what is this swami ji so much of fight in hinduism even the tall people like shankara ramanuja madhva even those great masters have so much of difference of opinion sometimes one directly attacks the other not even a courtesy politics a decent politics straight dam 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 dum even the top level acharyas are not in sync with each other we common people how can we understand anything what can we take it as right please understand some scientists discover something he gets the nobel prize within few years another one scientist disproves what that guy has discovered he also gets nobel prize that does not mean both of them have a difference of opinion it is a different angle the truth is presented i may not even want to say the first scientist discovery is wrong actually because of the first discovery the way he lifted us the second was even possible please understand in the field of knowledge different opinions means different thought trends and multiple choices amazing freedom amazing freedom listen amazing possibilities amazing freedom and amazing possibilities each one explores in their own way expresses in their own way and i tell you even when you read internalize shankara you will never become the follower of shankara you will be one expression of shankara that is why in shaivism we have a beautiful word shiva gana who embodies shiva when you constantly cognize and radiate shivoham you will not become follower of shiva you will become embodiment you will embody shiva understand shiva gana means gana means who embodies who is filled so the difference of opinions and different commentaries on upanishads 
should not put you away from upanishads should inspire to you you to explore the original upanishads understand yes no doubt shankara wrote a commentary in a different way ramanuja wrote a commentary in a different way madhvacharya wrote a commentary in a different way each one of them wrote commentary in a different way vivekananda translated and wrote a commentary in a different way swami gambhirananda has translated and written you will be surprised gambhirananda swami is the belongs to ramakrishna sampradaya but he dares to differ with vivekananda that's the beauty of hindu tradition ramakrishna mission has published at least 3 4 commentaries each one of them dare to differ with vivekananda it was so beautiful that's the greatness of hinduism nobody disrespects vivekananda we can't and we don't same way when osho writes commentary he does not disrespect anybody but he dares to differ i tell you that is the space in which sanatana dharma has grown that is the space in which the whole hindu tradition has expanded that's a space in which the whole vedic tradition has flowered these commentaries different commentaries these different commentaries the kind of a space available in the vedic tradition the kind of a space existed in the sanatana dharma of course so many people exploited it so many people misused it that is different yes shankara has his own opinion ramanuja has his own opinion madhva has his own opinion and people try to use this to show hindus are confused all this has happened but i tell you each one of them may have a different opinion but all of them wrote commentary on upanishads only so we may have thousands of opinions ideas but no one questions the sanctity of the upanishads authenticity of the upanishads the authority of the upanishads that is where everyone merges that is where everyone comes together each scientist may have a different discovery different theory different thesis but they all uphold the spirit of the science same way each master may have a different ideas theories concepts principles but they all uphold the spirit of the upanishads upanishads the more you read reread 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 and digest internalize more it makes you beautiful from within more it makes you beautiful from within i tell you the more you see yourself in the mirror the more you will fall into the delusion you are beautiful no it is <laughs> no just to create the delusion only some people go on staring at the mirror because when you look at that for a long time you have to come to terms with it
you have to come to terms to it terms with it how can you come to terms with it tolerating then accepting then slowly developing some appreciation and finally landing into the delusion but with upanishads the more you read 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 read, read really your inner space will become beautiful every truth which puts you in the cosmic cognition puts cosmos into your cognition understand the brahmanda should enter into pindanda and pindanda should enter into brahmanda the macrocosm should become part of the microcosm and microcosm should become part of the macrocosm not only the drop should merge into the ocean and the motion should merge into the drop drop merging into the ocean is enlightenment when the ocean merges into the drop is an incarnation a woman standing in front of the mirror in her bedroom she is not happy with what she sees and tells her husband i feel horrible i look old fat and ugly and i am really depressed please give me some compliment to get me out of depression husband says your eyesight's damn perfect now for a long time you stand in front of mirror to get you are self deluded with upanishads the more you read re read read re read your whole inner space will become beautiful and today i have this beautiful book to show to all of you the first book i ever got introduced the first book i ever held in my hand and ever was read out to me to tell you honestly at that age i was not knowing to read the alphabets this is the book the book on upanishads given to me my given to me by my parama guru fortunately we have the whole book other than the little pages last is available as it is printed in 1916 the book is printed in 1916 to tell you honestly i learned alphabets from this book actually i learned tamil alphabets from this book i learned english alphabets from the english bhagavad gita translation of chidbavananda swami i learned sanskrit alphabets from complete works of shankaracharya i learnt hindi reading reading the osho's books i learnt reading bengali reading original ramakrishna kathamrita i learnt any script only to read and know the spiritual literatures and i learnt the alphabets only using those books directly of course i had somebody helping me guiding me in each language but no language i formally learnt no alphabet i formally learnt from a regular school i think i should tell the truth in regular schools i never learnt anything <laughs> that is the truth and let the let that be on record <laughs> i should explain this joy of rereading to all you guys 
Please understand. Once you read and understand, you disappear into that concept. But only by rereading, 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 the concept disappears into you. Please understand, only when the concept disappears into you, you are secured that it, you will never be forgetting it. It won't be lost in your life. It has become part of you. And I encourage very strongly listening to many of my different satsangs, reading my books, again and again and again because all of them are multi-layered presentations. The satsangs and books, all of them are multi-layered presentations. This book, I don't know how many number of times I read. This was used even as a pillow by me. <laughs> I'll read, read, read. When I'm feeling sleepy, I'll put it just under the head and sleep. <laughs> that is what I, I developed the theory of directly downloading. <laughs> During sleep. Listen. Microcosm becoming macrocosm is enlightenment. Macrocosm becoming microcosm is incarnationhood. You having the cosmic cognition and cosmos having you in the cognition. You dissolving into these great truths and great, these great truths dissolving into you. Both of them are totally different. Listen, catch it. Catch it. Listen. With Upanishads, not only those great truths will provoke you to dissolve yourself into those truths, even they will dissolve into you. Listen, even they will dissolve into you. Provoking, provoking your being to dissolve into the truth can be done by any spiritual book. Even if you read some stotras of saints, your whole being will be provoked to dissolve into the truth. That is what the great bhaktas did. the saints of Vedic tradition, preaching devotion, the intensity of the passion and emotion is used beautifully to merge with the cosmos. Meera, Jnana Sammandar, Ramadasa, the great devotees, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, here in Karnataka, Akkamma Devi, in Andhra, Annamacharya, Tamil Nadu, Jnana Sammandar, Manikya Vasakar. I can go on listing. They all used the passion and emotion, intensity of the passion and emotion to dissolve into the cosmos. See, provoking you 
to dissolve into the truth any spiritual book can do but provoking the cosmos to dissolve into you only upanishads can do it only upanishads can raise you to that height you become so vast that cosmos dissolves into you the microcosm becomes so big as macrocosm so macrocosm can just dissolve into it if you have to have the whole universe in your mouth your mouth has to open to the size of the whole universe if the if the truth has to dissolve into you you should grow taller than the truth that can happen only by upanishads that is why i am telling upanishads don't make just enlightened beings it makes incarnations people ask me why only in india so many incarnations don't ever think indians are fools don't ever thinks indians believe immediately but with all the time telling you india was is will continue to produce maximum number of incarnations because this country's literature upanishad that is only capable of producing incarnation if at all incarnations has to happen on planet earth that can only be in the country india the place with bharat because the upanishads are lived only here it is just because of upanishads this land is the most holy land as long as it is breathing upanishads as long as it is breathing upanishads and it will ever breathe upanishads it will ever breathe upanishads ved vedanta sara the upanishads uncomparable its ability to put you into the cosmos and its ability to raise you into the cosmos its ability to make you radiate into the cosmos is unquestionable unimaginable i'll continue 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 on upanishads i think i need few more days even to introduce upanishads and set the context then enter into the verses because so many people are waiting for my commentary on upanishads so many are waiting for me to enter into the mantras the sacred texts so with this i bless you all let you all radiate with integrity authenticity responsibility enriching and casting and living advaita the eternal bliss nityananda thank you be blissful nityananda dhyana peetam nityananda nagar of mysore road bidadi bengaluru phone 08027279999 www.nityananda.org www.youtube.com/lifebliss foundation